Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another video. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be doing like a vlog um, of the books I'm reading for the Trans Rights Reader Fund, which takes place from the 20th to the 27th of March. Um, and it's to bring awareness to trans authors and trans literature, but also to raise money for trans organisations, specifically in this day and age when many trans people are being attacked by con by like constitution and legislation and just like a general like culture war and it's really horrible to see um and something that we should be addressing and i'm so happy how much hype this like readathon has gotten um and it's really spread so far and i'm really happy about that and i just want to read some more books about trans people this trans experience and also to support some trans authors i have actually currently read two books um already um that is peter darling by austin chant chant is a trans man himself um and i really enjoyed this book and i giving it four stars um he takes like the story of like peter pan and captain james hook and this world of neverland like places you really wouldn't expect it to go um it's sort of like a trans query telling in a way um but yeah i don't want to explain the plot too much because as you piece things together and how the story develops that is quite like a major part of the reading experience and it's just very enjoyable placing things together as it went on I really was like loving the characters more and more and more and just like the story and understanding things and it just everything was just it was just getting better and better um and it's really like quite good at showing like the queer experience from like a trans male perspective um and like although it's like a fantastical world like Neverland and magic and all that stuff um there is like some like messages and like certain things that like shine through and like parallel to like our world uh which i really enjoyed um the characters and writing are like the the most amazing but it's definitely and very enjoyable and it's a very like easy read there's like a certain part a comment on sort of like queer suicide in a sense and sort of like different reasons why a queer person might choose to um die by suicide and this sort of like struggle um but it's definitely has like a more positive outlook and i feel like it was handled well if that's what he was going for i'm not sure it's just a certain part that i took and how i interpreted it um but that's what is great about literature is that you can interpret things in many different ways overall i would really really recommend this book um i'm intrigued to read more of chance works um and yeah, go and support him. And I shall change now because I'm actually going out. Um, and then I'll tell you about the next book I read. <laughs> Ooh, transition. Um, the next book I read was Princess Princess Ever After by K. O'Neill. Um, they go by the pronouns they, them. Um, and this book was super sweet. Um, it's a really sweet little lovely queer graphic novel. Um, and it addresses like many like themes, but it's sort of like aimed at like children as a middle grade audience. Um, and these include like fat phobia and body shaming, bullying, sexism and misogyny, just like damaging ideals of like masculinity on boys as well. Um, like parental and family expectations and how there's sort of like a burden placed on like people but in this thing specifically younger people um and also like gender expectations um and because it's aimed at like children and middle grade audience it's it's very uplifting and i really love the way o'neill um like puts like these messages forward um it's just it's a very 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 pleasant and nice read there is some like topics like i said that it, that it does talk about but they're all like definitely handled well and appropriately specifically about how like certain expectations that are placed on people can really hinder like one's personality and the true like them um and it's also talks about like like being yourself and seeing different things from other people's perspective which are put forward and it's just really great and enjoyable um so the story actually follows two princesses amira and sadie 
um, and they do different things um, and also a little adorable queer romance um, blossoms between them. Um, it is quite like simplistic, um, this goes for the writing and the artwork but it's, it's definitely really enjoyable and so like easy to read um, and there's no like real hindrance. The artwork is actually really like pretty as well, they're very like nicely drawn um, but obviously it is suited to a younger audience. But no, no, nothing I can say bad about it really. Um, so I do kind of wish it maybe it was a bit longer and um, a bit more fleshed out. Um, but I still really enjoyed it and have given this four stars. And I'm so happy that like children have this as a resource and a book to read to know that like being queer and being different is totally normal. And um, also about how like certain like pressures that are placed on people especially when they're in the younger mind like about like body image and like being themselves and hiding things like different expectations and how they handle from like if you hand it at a young age you are better prepared when you're older and I just thought it's really good um, and I cannot wait to read more of their works. I also started a poetry collection called um, Content Warning Everything um, and I've read about five poems, I think, and I'm really enjoying them. A little bit, a little bit abstract for like my liking at times, but I'm definitely enjoying it. Um, and I will talk more about it when I get to it. Um, I have now finished Content Warning Everything by Akweke Emezi. Um, this is my first book by them. They identify as non-binary transgender. Um, they're from Nigeria. Um, and they have quite a few books that have been, um, like well received uh like pets and fresh water the death of vivek og um and yeah but i thought i would read their poetry collection um because i was in the mood for some poetry um and i did really quite enjoy this um i ended up giving it four stars quite like varied in like both form and like the topics discussed but a recurring theme is sort of like rage uh religion and grief the poems all contain quite a high level of like rawness and like emotional honesty which i really appreciated and quite a few like parts um there were certain things that i could also relate to um and i just felt that they was done very well and very honest and raw um a few was maybe a little too abstract for my brain um but that's kind of me personally um that i didn't really get to understand them but overall as a collection i do feel it is quite accessible and enjoyable mostly um so yeah um i thought i would read two of my favorite poems out but why did you feel you had to kill yourself baby love one, I thought it would be a useful sacrifice. Two, habit or morbid tradition. Three, God and I were in a feud. Four, the world is foul I needed to bathe in my blood. Five, spite and vengeance. Six, no one else would do it. Seven, I missed not existing. Eight, how can you answer me that? Nine, knowing how lonely. Ten, I have been. Uh... -huh. I I quite enjoy this one. Um, it's not the most nice, but um, there's a certain line I miss not existing. It's just like it really sums up a sort of like a feeling that I sometimes feel where you just you just kind of want to be like out of existence, not necessarily like like oh, forever, but just like you just want to like move away from what's going on if that makes any sense i'm not sure but when like you read things and you really kind of sort of like understand stuff it it really like holds you deeper and and it's i don't know i just think that they did this really well um and then the other one is quite long for this one but I've, i like it i thought i'd read it um it's called i was born in a great length of a river if I run the water at full bludgeoning force, it takes the bathtub 13 minutes to fill, 20 seconds for the bath bomb to dissolve, 11 if I stir, 4 seconds for Epsom salts, I sink as deep as I can, involve my lungs, it takes nothing if I add nothing. 
When I was nine, I could hold my breath for 20, 75 seconds. I practiced in class, practiced underwater fall from one end of the pool to the other, the long way. I held the air deep in my stomach, ballooned it into my cheeks, let it out in small measured hisses. I rationed it. In Ghana, 20 years later, I tripped on a rock while trying to leave the ocean and got seized by the quick tide. It tossed and sucked me. I couldn't stand, so instead I curled against the floor as the waves battered over my head. I held my breath and I did not not and I did not die. Do you hear? I did not die. What I'm saying is it doesn't matter which water, I will never know what it's like to drown. I don't I, I quite like this one and I think it was done well. I don't know, just sometimes there's certain poems that like just stick out to you and I get this quite a lot where like there's just certain things that that I can just that I just, I just like and I, sometimes I don't know why I just do and this is an example of a poem that I just like and I don't really have much else to say other than I liked it um and these are two quotes that that I really liked as well from other poems um is we said in 20 years they'd put us both in each other's documentary how could they not and this is from uh, the titular poem, so the poem that's called Haunted One and Everything in the collection. I'm trying to use my like newfound literature knowledge um, and is at the end. Um, and this one I quite liked as well, this like part of the poem. What wars have been fought on me? What hauntings I carry in the blaze of unspeakable light? Look at me through tears of blood, through the healing flesh, fall on your knees. Beautify me, canonize me, mark me full of blasphemy, give me an army for what the fire has made of me. You have been seeking wonders in all the wrong places. Now here, gaze upon me. I am the effing miracle. So yeah, um, I just thought that was very good. Um, and I'm definitely intrigued to read more of Amezi's works. Um, so I'm only about like... <laughs> 10 pages into if i was your girl and basically the main character amanda um she is going like to visit her dad um who she hasn't seen for six years because like sophomore year um she i uh, was hospitalized i think it was from like a hate crime attack but i'm not 100 percent sure yet uh but her mum was like you're not really safe here um so she goes to see her dad who she like i said hasn't seen in six years he claims to be like old fashioned and he's like he needs time and stuff but she says um my name's amanda now and he calls her that straight away and then they're in like like a restaurant wait thing and he's talking with the waitress and the waitress is like oh, who's this with you and then amanda's like oh i'm amanda because she didn't know if like her dad has told her anyone about like his family and how like he had he had a son um and then the dad is like she's my daughter i'm like that is such that is so good to, to, for how like they haven't seen each other for like a very long time and they've grown like a, a lot in the time as well um and although he is self-proclaimed old-fashioned he's just straight out like except basically accepted her and that's just it's just it's really lovely to see like i feel like a lot of the time so many like queer books and like a lot of queer representation is negative but although that is is very prevalent into the society and it is good to have the bad and, and the good but sometimes it's really nice to just see acceptance and and a really good representation so i'm really enjoying this at the moment and i'm i'm, I'm actually it's just it's very it's written very engaging and like, i've only read like a little bit but i cannot wait to read more uh, so i have some updates um so i'm really hot at the moment i don't know why but um i've been reading more of if i was your girl um and it's sort of like it's sort of like two time frames but yeah it is basically so there's the current time frame is when um amanda has come to with to live with her father um and um she's starting like new school and stuff and meeting like new friends and a possible like 
possible love interest, which I've, I've read the description, so it, it, he is. Um, and he seems really nice. He's called Grant. Um, and she's, like, making friends and stuff, but she, like, was, um... Another girl could be, um, and they went sort of like off because they're like when they go to art, the teacher is actually there. So they she took her to like a abandoned place, and it was like playing like a game, like a truth game thing. And she really wanted to like tell her like that she is a trans woman, um, but she just like couldn't. But like the B was like totally fine. She was like, okay, like I can just do something else. Um, so yeah um that is going good it's definitely one that like it brings you forward which i'm really happy about uh so yeah but um also i've started the manga um boys run the riot by kato gaku um translated by leo mcdonough um and both the author and the translator are queer trans men um and this follows the story of Ryo um who is a trans boy in a Japanese in Japan in a like school and he like only feels comfortable when he's like wearing like boys clothes and um he's sort of like hiding it from like his peers and family and stuff and then a new boy comes um called Jin and he looks sort of just like a typical like like a bully or like a popular kid sort of thing um but then they're out in the street and he's wearing his boys clothes um and they both reach for the same top and then Jin is like okay like we have the same style um I don't like he's has to, he's retaking the gear um and he's like why don't we start like a brand together um and this is sort of like the first time that Rio like feels like he can like open up to someone um and Jin is like perfectly fine he's like I know I cannot understand like what's going in your head because obviously you are a transgender person and I'm not and um like he understands that like difference but he wants to be there for Rio even though that they've just met and like all they really have in common is their fashion sense, I guess. Um, but he seems really nice already. Um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I read that chapter, chapter three, so I'm gonna go into chapter four soon. Um, and it's a four part manga, like four volumes. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna read more, but I'm probably gonna finish probably volume one and then see if I wanna continue it. Um, this is definitely, it's more like, I feel like the story is going to do like be based on the fact that they're growing like a brand and like the clothing and stuff more than his transgenderism it's just like he so happens to be a transgender character um which I think is actually really good because it's like this isn't the be one end all like they have other passions and things uh but yeah I'm really enjoying both of these books and I shall give you an update very soon I didn't know I was going to cry in this video, but yep, um, I'm on the verge, and um, I'm only like 55 pages in to uh, If I Was Your Girl, and uh, earlier, I was, <laughs> I am such a tangent person, but earlier I was saying about how it's sort of two different time frames, and I only spoke about one, which was the current one, but the other one is, um, sort of, it's like about three years ago, when Amanda, um, things was going really bad in her head, and she tried to, um, take her own life, and that is what the incident was three years ago. Um, and then how she's um, talking with her, like, mum and, like, counsellor and stuff. And how she says that, like, I am a girl, I am a woman. And um, then I believe she starts her, like, physical transition process. Um, and that is, that is, so it sort of keeps going back to that, but I don't know if it's going to continue or not. Um, but there was a bit um, where um it went back to 11 years ago and this is when she's um like in like uh, elementary middle school i'm not i'm not too sure um and she was like told like write like a story for like 
English class or something um, about where they see themselves in the future and she writes this really nice like story about like finding like a like a car time machine thing and she goes to the future and she's in like a lab and there's this like really beautiful tall woman um and she has like a lab coat on um and um but it's sort of like a dress and she says like oh she couldn't explain so you have to write a draw a picture and stuff it's all really nice and and then this woman like bends down and says I am you in the future and you feeling that you're a girl is fine and that you will grow up to be a woman not a man so she's so excited um she's she's really excited about this story and how she's done it and stuff she really wants to tell her parents and stuff so she shows her dad and he's like he's all like oh this, this looks interesting but then he's like gets like the page where she sees a woman he's like okay and then he gets to the page where she says i'm you and he starts getting angry then he just skips the last ones and he's like tell me this is a joke um and then she starts crying and and how um she, when she cries in front of her dad and stuff she doesn't like it he doesn't like it because he says all oh, that cries for girls and and then he's like tell me this is a joke because boys like this boys like this in in your story are confused and they don't go out to live happy lives so she says yes sir and it's just, it's just, ah, oh, it's just really sad because, like, it's, it's so clear that she knew that she was a girl from a very young age and children do know and for people to diminish this and try and say that oh like you're confused and things it's it's so damaging like clearly because well uh, like eight years later she tries to take her own life because she's been hiding this in all this time and if her parents and like the teacher as well and stuff if they understood things before then so much more could have been better and I don't know, I just, this it made me really sad. But I am really enjoying this book. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, on to chapter seven now. Benji, growl if you support trans rights. <laughs> I love him, but he does like to growl. <laughs> what do you want? You want to go play? I think he wants me to play so i'm gonna stop reading for a bit play a bit and then i'll read some more <laughs> i actually i love b she's so funny um but also sort of correct i don't know but um basically b and amanda are like talking um and like amanda's relationship with grant is sort of like developing but he's like keeping things from her so b is like joking like oh maybe he's gay um but then she's like no no i'm just joking with you but parker who is like he's like sort of homophobic in a way um she was like he is a closet case and amanda's like no um but she said that um like how often do you think about women having sex and amanda's like never my point exactly. Homophobes think about gay sex all the time because they want to have it. They insist being gay is a choice because every single day they have to choose not to have the kind of sex they want. Homophobes are super gay. I guess that's makes. I guess that makes sense. I said, but wouldn't that make the South the gayest place in the Western Hemisphere? Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I thought it was funny and. I couldn't maybe I don't know uh, but yeah I'm so enjoying this so I finished um Boys Run the Riot and I really enjoyed it um, I ended up giving it a 4.25 stars which is the best so far um I really thoroughly enjoyed this um and I will definitely be continuing this series there's only four parts to it so like it it, sh it won't go on for that long sadly about Jin and Rio and they start like a 
clothing brand and Rio finally has someone that he can find in about his like gender identity um I really love the characters and like the messages and it's not just about these two boys starting a, like a brand a fashion brand uh there's like themes and messages which like expand beyond this um about like not letting society and like the opinions and expectations of people that don't matter like it impact you and like they're just irrelevant and like don't let these things like hinder like your creativity and your true self and it's just great um and like rio does um include like parts about him coming to terms with his gender identity which the author Geku um, put his own like experiences in into this as well. Also Jin and a later character Itsuka also have like a lot more to their personalities than just like what is on the surface um, and I really cannot wait to like get to know more about these characters and just follow their journeys. Um, so yeah so volume one definitely like set the like the building blocks of like what's sort of happening and i believe and it's just gonna like go along um i feel like <laughs> it might be a bit of an emotional one uh but i think it's gonna be quite heartwarming which i'm really happy about uh so yeah um and yeah, so I said here in my, I'm just reading a review here, Gecko is a trans man and he implemented parts of his personal life into the work. Um, and I love this because you get the glimpse of like psychology and mind of Rio and also other trans men um, and trans people. Um, but um, there is like some element of like shame, which is very prevalent in like queer literature um but there is a lot of this sort of like fighting back and like hope and like positivity which i really enjoyed um and i just feel like it's great especially to see in more like translated works um and yeah uh the editorial team and the translator me at don me leo mcdonald like i said uh were all transgender as well so that's really great to see um, also what is great in here is at the end there's like um, like Q&A with the author. I thought I'd just share a few bits from the Q&A that I quite liked. Uh, so the manga people ask um, him, uh, with his willingness to want to learn more about and understand Rio, Jin is a great example of someone who is not only a good friend but a good ally. Do you have any advice for family members or friends of transgender and LGBTQ plus individuals on how they can support and better understand their transgender family members, friends or peers? Then the author says, um, everyone has different kinds of relationships with their family and friends, so I don't think there's one absolute rule for how people should treat transgender people. I often hear trans people say that they simply don't want to be asked unpleasant questions about what their body looks like or what their sex life is like, but I think that most people wouldn't like being asked such questions, transgender or not. Um, personally, I don't want my friends and family to have to be too cautious about how they treat me, but that doesn't mean I want them to brazenly ask me whatever questions they like. I just want to be treated equally without them fixating on my gender. I think that the person you're coming out to needs time to process it, just as you probably took years to process it yourself before coming out. You might be worried about rejection or hurting people, and although it might be irresponsible to say this, I really feel that time heals all wounds. If you have the courage to tell them, then all you can do after that is show them or put in your all into living happily as your authentic self and doing your best to be positive and face the future. Um, and then the final bit, um, what do you hope to convey to young transgender boys and men with Boys Run the Riot? I know you must be worried about a lot of things, particularly if you're a teenager, but I hope you can find a reason to keep going and something to pour your heart and soul into, like Rio does with fashion. With this manga, I wanted to show how amazing it is to find something like that. However, for the people who hide their transgender identity and blend it into society, they could be very anxious about having this manga in their workplace and might even think that it's unnecessary. If you're one of those people, I'm sorry. If we ever meet, let's go get a drink somewhere. I thought it was nice. Um, and then also in the acknowledgements, which, I mean, you can pause if you want to read like them. I don't know if it's going to show up. Uh, but here, the last bit he says, that's quite nice. This is from like the editor. Um, 
Uh, it says further, whether you're transgender or have someone in your life that is, I hope this first volume of Boys Run the Right resonated with you and reminded you that you're not alone. So yeah, I would really, really recommend this manga. So I have finished If I Was Your Girl now. Um, and then I read some reviews uh, just to try and compile my thoughts. Um, and it has come to my attention that the author's, I believe, ex-wife um, uh, made some allegations, compelling ones with evidence um, of sexual assault and domestic violence and character defamation and other things. Um, and I don't really want to support her anymore. Um, but... I would say I would still recommend the book, but to get it secondhand or from like a library or online. Um, and I was intrigued by her second book, um, but after reading these, I do not want to read them, read it. Um, but that being said, um, this is my review about the book that I've tried to separate from the author. Um, because I do think it is worth reading, um, I just have some reservations. So yeah, so I told you about the storyline about Amanda moving over with her father. Um, she kind of wants to just keep her head down. But then there's like new friends and like a love interest and other things. Um, and I said about how like it's sort of like in two time frames. It's not really. There's like the present one, and then interspersed there are some like flashbacks to the past. Which I think are done very well because they're written like she is actually that age. Um, and yeah, I thought it was done really good. Maybe a few more might have been like beneficial, but I thought it was good um, nonetheless. Um, so yeah, uh, the main character, Amanda, I really, really liked. Um, she is very developed and there's a lot to her character. She's very lovable, a great friend, just like a generally a great person. Um, and also um, in the like the author's notes at the end, uh, Russo says that she wrote Amanda to be a very like a positive and sort of unrealistic um, portrayal of a trans girl. Um, and how her life isn't not possible, it is definitely possible, but this is sort of like an ideal that many transgender people have, about like she can like pass easily, she's very like just genetic, very attractive, uh, her family have like finances to like support her surgeries and things, um, and lots of other things, so she has, she has quite a lot of advantages, uh, which many many transgender people don't have um and she acknowledges this but she wanted to portray a like a a good story um so yeah so i do think like this is maybe to cater to a bit of like a cisgender audience um and with maybe some more complexity might have been better uh, but it was written in 2016, it was one of the first, like, most first widely distributed trans novels written by a transgender woman. Um, so I guess she wasn't trying to go too out there. But in 2023, I do feel like it's a little bit aged. And there is maybe better contemporary trans fiction out there. Um, but at the time I think it probably was very beneficial and it was very like I'm guessing it was good for trans people to see that they're being represented in literature. The other characters, Grant I thought was really cute and sweet and nice. Um, B I liked until a certain thing. Um, and the other characters, Layla, Anna and Chloe, um, they're like sort of like a nice, they're like the girl gang friends. Um, they was all fine. Um, they sort of, there isn't too much of their characters apart from like a single, like a token element of them. But overall, it was fine. Um, the writer messages again are okay. Um, I think it's done well. There's nothing like that amazing, but it's still good um and like there is 
there is quite a lot of like this queer shame attitude and rhetoric um within it but there is also like hopefulness and like positivity but also quite a lot of trigger warnings and i wouldn't say it's like trauma corn but there is quite a bit of it as well um and some parts that are hard to read it is quite an accurate portrayal of certain like transphobic and homophobic uh like rhetorics and like hate crimes and bullying scenarios which are difficult to read um but i guess they do happen um still do happen a lot i cannot speak for transgender people um as a male presenting person um <clears throat> but i'm guessing some parts would be more distressing for trans people to read um but also uplifting as well um so it is quite an up and down book um there is some bits that are like really lovely also some bits that are very heart-wrenching um and i did shed a few tears as well um so like overall i do feel like it's quite a difficult book to review um i enjoyed it i thought it definitely flowed well and it's very easy to read um i think overall i probably would have given it maybe like a 4.5 stars actually um and i would recommend it definitely but i have lowered that to a three because of what i said at the beginning of this section um that i just i don't really want to support the author um so it is quite a difficult one uh but yeah um i thought i'll just quickly just tell you these quotes that i thought was quite good dancing with a boy for the first time in my entire life i felt like a part of the people around me like another cell in a healthy body instead of a hidden disease I wished I could walk up into the sky and live on some distant planet, far away from the things I was afraid of. I wondered if joy could ever be felt by itself, without being tainted with fear and confusion, or if some level of misery was a universal constant, like the speed of light. Finally, um, I felt, felt myself in my own body being loved and accepted, and it felt so, so good it was almost surreal. This wasn't my life. This couldn't be my life. Things like this did not happen to girls like me. On to the next book. Um, I'm not sure where it's going to be yet, but I shall explain then. Hello. Um, so I'm currently on my sixth book, um, which is uh, A Trans Man Walks Into a Gay Bar by Harry Nicholas. Um, this is like a sort of memoir, non-fiction book um i'm about 40 percent through um and i am really really enjoying this it's very like eye-opening and interesting and like well written and enjoyable and funny at times as well and he is he has a very like like no the humor isn't thought it's just like a wit um which i really love uh but i have been making some notes um so i thought i would share them with you um so it basically starts with him and his girlfriend of five years breaks up with him and she is like i think you are gay so he's sort of like okay maybe i'm gonna like explore this part of me because um he's always fancied boys but this relationship with lucy um was based on like a personal like attachment and stuff this is the first non-fiction book I'm reading, um, so it's obviously, like, all true. But yeah, um, also I just think, of, like, the way he p puts things together is just done well and intriguing and, like, you want to read on. But yeah, here goes, some quotes. Um, there is no one way to be gay, trans and queer. We are a million people under one beautiful, horrifyingly large, if slightly misshapen, rainbow umbrella. <laughs> Love that. 
Um, saying that I exist as, rather than the commonly used phrase I identify as, is important to me. I identify as suggests that there is something to debate or there is something to uncover, that there is an untruth, as though it is something we believe about ourselves but others don't have to see, acknowledge or respect. Perhaps there would be some queer resistance just in the act of living, but no. If ever there was a time to speak out about the terrain between being gay and trans, it is now. It is important for me, too, for all trans people to say loudly, clearly and proudly that we exist. We are. We live. That we are messy, complex, friendly, nasty, sexy, domestic, boring, intelligent, kind, witty, geeky, human. I thought, yes, 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 yes. Um, our opulent and vast stories have been silenced for too long. It's time to make ourselves heard. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, so there's sort of just like a few quotes. Uh, but now, then I went on to sort of like notes. I won't say explain them more, but just like a few things that like spoke out to me that I thought I would just mention. My genitals do not define my gender any more than my nails define my height. And how that like... Trans people, like, they do think about and they do know that sex is real. Uh, but this is something that isn't, that doesn't really impact gender. It's like sex, gender and, gen and sexuality are like three separate things. Um, and like he's saying, like, moving away from this, like, born in the wrong body sort of like ideology to a wrong world where, like... <laughs> transness is seen as like having a broken body um and like there is still times when like he has like dysphoria and uh other trans people will like experience things that like they wish they didn't have a certain part or they wish they had another part or things like that um but like like that they, they don't need to be fixed it's not like broken or anything if you get what i'm trying to say um so yeah and how that like surgeries and hormones he took not to like be fixed but to like be more present and closer um and he said um, this quote um it was the biggest act of self-care and self-love i've ever been able to afford offer myself so it's like it's just to be more complete but not to actually fix him that makes sense um another little quote you look you don't look at someone's genitals first do you that's not the initial attraction it may be their look their style their character their voice so based on attraction purely on genitalia when there are so many other things that make a person that make a person makes little sense that is so true like it's not like you don't look at someone like oh I'm just looking straight at like your bits and stuff um you look at like their hair or their smile or their laugh and you know you know what i'm trying to say i feel like it's written both to cater to like people that know about the subject i don't want to call it a subject but like about the lives of transgender people and the struggles and the psychology um but also people that are new to it um or like just want to learn more when he was younger um he like fit like lesbian stereotypes and he was like bullied and stuff um by other girls um for being like a lesbian um but he didn't think for like he was because he was attracted to boys but he was just like oh maybe i'll grow into it um and um and he sort of like went to like musical theatre and stuff um and he was like able to like wear like men's clothes because he was portraying a ma male character um and it was sort of like finally like feeling like comfortable um and just like he longed for this like the feeling of it but he understood that the fit wasn't designed for his body at that at the time um and he talks about like how like hyper masculinity um, is very like harmful to like everybody men women and people of different genders and they broke up and how like he needs to like what is it meant to, like what is it going to be like as a trans man in like the gay world and there wasn't like really like any like trans gay representation like in like movies and like like 
celebrities and things then he sort of like looks on grinder he didn't like expect it to be like so harsh and like it's like understand like new like lingo and acronyms and like tribes and stuff um but like i feel like i don't want to swing too much because obviously i don't want to like you to not read the book so definitely i would recommend it uh but i'm just sort of like there's a few things that he's talking about and and sort of like different like, conversations and uh, also he talks about like not using just the term like trans uh like because it trans people are not like an object or a thing like you need to say trans people or transgender people um and he was talking about like he got like a message on grinder about someone said that like oh like i'm not sure what it is exactly but it's like you're i never i didn't think trans was attractive but you are or something and how like he's basically insinuating that like a whole group of people you don't find attractive just because they are transgender but like oh he's an exception so like is it a compliment maybe you thought it was but like it's not because you're kind of like it's transphobic because you're like do you know what i mean i don't know i'm not i'm not the best at articulating but like yeah um and then he's talking about um sort of like sports and he has like statistics as well and like footnotes where like they're actually from um and um there was like a study done that said like 58 percent of trans people said that they felt unwelcome in sports and 46 percent um have had a negative experience um but like he went to like a like an lgbtq plus inclusive football club um, and like he doesn't have the best performance but, like they were like everyone there is all like all abilities um and but it was it was fun like and that's like the main thing and he really was understanding that like i'm enjoying doing this again in like a body that feels more comfortable uh so yeah um, and then he talks about like passing and how like being like passing as a certain the gender um was like the like the the thing that trans people attained for but how like more nowadays that there's like a bit of reclaiming of like certain words and like challenging the binary and he talks about different like writers and artists and people that um are like leading like a revolution in a way and um it's really interesting and he's like linking to like different like people and different works um which i really I'm really like interested in looking looking these things up more and exploring it. Um, so yeah, um, and it's also about how like he doesn't really care. He doesn't really like care about passing anymore. He just wants to just like live. He talks about like how hate crimes um, against like queer people um, have been growing like on um, since like 2019. Um, and how the intersectionality is like increases people's chances of like being a victim of crimes um and how like trans women of color like are the most impacted um and how like i'm gonna read this whole big quote in a second but it's sort of about how like there's physical violence against trans people but also like from the government and police and healthcare and how like they, he's prepared and to continue to fight and like say like all queer people need to like band together and just like root out like all the things that are stopping people just living and existing so yeah um so i'm gonna read quite a, it's a quite a long quote um where he's that I, i'm just gonna read it because i think it's very good and this is the part that's gonna just stick with me because um it makes me angry and I'm like, you know, so anyway, uh, to me, transphobic violence doesn't always necessarily mean being shouted at in the street. Violence takes many forms. Yes, physical sometimes. But what of the violence of this government who seeks to put into intentional and unnecessary barriers into legal recognition as male or female? or of intentionally removing trans people from a conversion therapy ban, throwing the doors wide open to psychological torture and abuse for people who are not ill and do not need fixing. 
and was of medical violence, choosing to continue having huge wait times, currently up to five years, for specialist care, making trans people jump through high, unfounded hoops that fit a strict narrative of what it is to be trans, gatekeeping, life-saving hormones and surgeries. And what of police violence? Our prize did not start as a celebration. They started in di direct resistance to the police raiding our bars and arresting us for the crimes of love. And what of employment violence? Companies outing employees and dismissing them unfoundly. And what of the violence of being trans? When we are born, a decision was made f for us without our consent. We are forced to live childhood as aliens to us and become girl to woman, boy to man. We are told not to ask, not to question, that this is just a phase, to push ourselves down, to damage, to bend and break ourselves until we fit. To be trans is to face violence while others, yas queen, using the language of our ancestors while ignoring our struggle. For some, trans lives are something to be debated over Sunday dinner, but real lives are at stake. To be trans is to face violence but be a warrior. We navigate systems that are not designed for us. It doesn't mean that we are wrong. It means the systems in place are, and we will continue to fight and change them. Yes, like that is, I just thought that was very inspirational and I can't wait to read more. Um, and the next chapter is the titular chapter, I guess, um, where I believe he's going to explore a gay bar as a trans man which just I'm, I want to know his experience um so yeah I am really enjoying this um, uh, a little update time so I've been reading more of um the memoir which I'm really enjoying I'm about 70% through um but I went out today and I only had like my phone on me um but I started reading but quite finished near enough um volume two of voyage around the riot um and i am really really enjoying this second episode volume edition i don't know um but i do like a review in a little bit when i finish it properly um but it's basically about like rio still um and Jin and it's and it's suka and they're like growing their brand a bit um and then rio tries to get like a part-time job um and he's sort of like having like sort of like issues with like managers and stuff like recognizing his like male like identity and like things um and uh but like he finds like another job um and like he's sort of making friends and stuff and that he's have a girl there called um mitsuki um who seems she's she's like a character but she's like nice i really like her character um and then afterwards like a little bit like this things happen and stuff but i don't want to like spoil anything um but um they Jin like has connections with um someone else that's like in the school and he is like cousin as like a famous youtube channel where she where they do like makeup and like fashion and like talk about like lgbtqi plus um like identities um so they're so they said oh like, i want to do a collab and she like sort of like takes like new pictures and stuff with like the new designs and things um and i'm just up to the bit where they're gonna like release their videos about like announcing the brand um so yeah i'm really excited i don't know exactly what their gender identity is but i believe it's going to be like gender queer or gender fluid but i know they that they use they them pronouns um and also i think mizuki is possibly bi or pan i'm not too sure i'm loving the queerness in this book it is so good and i'm just loving the characters and i'm just so like interested in their lives and i just love it um this is like turned out to be like a manga i'm really really enjoying uh so yeah so i think i'm about like one or two chapters near the end of it um so finish that do a whole review um and also finish um a gay man a trans man walks into a gay bar um but the only problem is that it's 11 o'clock now um on the 27th so technically i only have an hour but i'm gonna finish them both in the early hours of the 28th like i'm sorry like yeah i'm not playing by the rules um but i'm just gonna count it as part of the readathon um and yeah see you when i'm done i guess <laughs>
um, actually it turned out I only had five panels left, um, or like pages, um, and oh my god. Um, so volume two ended on a cliffhanger, um, and I am like, I, I need volume three like near enough straight away, but I'm going to try and resist. I shall finish the memoir and then I have another book I need to finish for another video that will be coming after this um but I started that video like a few weeks ago anyway um so I'm gonna think I'm, I hope to like read volume three and four um at the beginning of next month because I need to know what's gonna happen next um but yeah I really enjoyed this um I think I gave the first one 4.25 stars um I think I might actually give this 4.5 stars but round it down to four on Goodreads um but the series as a whole has the potential to be a five stars so I'm getting excited um but yeah um I re-looked up their name and how to pronounce it um, it's supposed to pronounce Subasa um but they use the like the kanji character that sounds like that I believe um means wing in english um so that's why they use wing as their like youtube name um but yeah i like their character but i'm also a bit like um han um i mean if you read it you'll know <laughs> what i'm thinking but i'm shocked i'm oh so is my phone uh but yeah i'm like rio um okay super excited for the next one uh and yeah update with the memoir soon <laughs> so i finished um <clears throat> a trans man walks into a gay bar and this memoir is so good uh oh my god so thank you so much net galley and Jessica Kingsley Publishing and Harry uh, Nicholas as well um, for accepting me to be a pre-publication reviewer. Um, it comes out on the 18th of May, I think. I don't know if I said that before, um, but I would so recommend this book. It's just like this book just has so much in it, but it also goes quickly, and uh, he puts like like anecdotes and like he links them to like current affairs but also like like queer history and just i don't know what it, it's just there's there's something about it that's just it really clicked with me and it just it just all came together so well and it's so readable here he's talking about how like um he goes on like dates or like before hook up or something and he feels like like he should tell them that he's trans um and then this is, goes into this like bigger like idea that uh like trans people are like hiding their identity or they're living like a facade or a lie um and then this like leads to them being like a dangerous or like a threat um but like no it's just that society has this thing that like you're cis until outed kind of like rhetoric um so like it just th that argument does not make any sense because i don't know i, I can't explain it but yeah um and here's the quote you said um i hope that we reach a moment where we don't assume that everyone who dresses in x way has these genitals or someone who wears y has those ones it's up to all of us trans and cisgender folk to catch ourselves when we are making these assumptions and judgments and to treat people as just that people yes and um health care um like so much was and still currently is based on like physical things and like the ideal of passing um but then other things get like pushed aside like sexual health and like abortion rights and so many other things um and um here's a quote that like he says about 
uh, that trans people are not alone in this struggle and for decades people that lived with like HIV and AIDS um, like died because of like government neglect and stigma and so many things so there's like there's been much evidence that uh, medical discrimination and abuse um, is in our communities our fight for fair balance and humane health care is a joint one and it still continues um, and this is everyone from the whole queer community um, still need to keep pushing for like better health care especially for trans people and as the book is called um, the sub drop heading is like a self and sexual like journey discovery thing uh, so he does talk about quite a bit about like certain like sexual discoveries and sexual content and different things like that so that they said it will trigger warning uh well it's quite a big one but um i think it is handled very well and it's and it's interesting but i don't know how was this way but is there's just there's just something about the way he talks about things that gives you so much information and so much like knowledge but it's all a lot of it is also just his experience um and yeah i don't know i just feel like it's just it's just really done there well so when this comes out i so recommend it uh so yeah um i think there's a few more things um and he talks about like how like lockdown affected us um and how he saw his messaging with like a man called liam who is just like <laughs> sounds like such a dream um and just like there's just like so many like cutesy parts but also like there's just there's just something about like this he talks about how that like we were people first category second we existed outside of semantics and boxes and it's just this idea of like how that like when they were together like they was the normal and they did wasn't feel othered by society and it was just like that's just like such uh like i feel like that's such a, a thing to aspire to have like with someone just to like feel that like that you have become the norm if that makes any sense i don't know also it is like 4 a.m <laughs> so i'm a bit tired but i want to film edit and uh make sure this is uploaded ready for the 28th and in the afterward he talks about uh about how like there's like a need for representation of gay trans people um and he is providing this um and how there's like there is trans joy that so many people experience and like this euphoria of like <sighs> feeling happy and like there was so much joy in it but you there is also violence and um hardships and it's just like a way of life that there's good and bad um and i feel like this is addressed really well like there was there was so much nuance in this book where like he's talking about things that like might be bad but like there's like a wit to it or or each one of our things that are like good but then he thinks it's to like like a problem or something um and i just think it's just great yeah um and this is like quote he says at the end that my very existence is proof of queer power and resistance and how like queer people um trans people and gay people and trans gay people have been silenced for like so long so like we're really at a point where they need to be heard for me the epitome of lgbtq plus pride and why the lgb and the t can never be torn apart it's the same fight is about rejecting the prison of sexuality and gender that was inflicted on us without a consent and saying no that does not fit me this fight is about freedom, escaping the barriers and systems that force us all down and battling to live authentically away from binary heteronormative structures. It's about being outsiders and owning it. It's about rejecting those who seek to control our authentic lives and dampen us down. 
queerness is about creating a new space for us all italics yep and another really great one uh, to be queer is to reject boundaries that have been imposed on us what clothes we should wear who we can fall in love with who we can have sex with and what our bodies can look like what our futures can be um yeah that's just yeah great um and then also he at the end he links to works of like literature um that inspired him and i've like screenshot it because like they all sound really interesting uh one of them uh straight jacket by matthew todd is a book that i've had on my tbr for like before i even got into reading uh so i definitely want to get that soon and give that a read uh but i thought i'd just uh, i can like show you like here is the list of the books that he recommends and here's like some poetry books so yeah um i loved this book um i think i'm gonna really give it like 4.5 4.75 stars um i would so recommend it um i really enjoy doing this reading vlog i know it's long so thank you for staying here um and i to my knowledge i don't think i've read a book by a trans author before doing this which is bad and something i should have done before um but i'm really glad that i have taken the opportunity to explore seven trans works um and this is like the starting point this is like a tiny level of what is out there um and what i already know i want to explore more of um there's so many books that i've like, added to my tbr whilst researching what to read um and i just cannot wait to explore more trans literature um see like trans trans authors and also like more some more fiction and non-fiction poetry mem like all the different genres i'm interested in um i cannot wait i literally cannot wait um and definitely stay tuned <laughs> follow me um if you want to see when i get to some more trans lit um and yeah um if you've reached as far in the video thank you so much um i really appreciate it if you drop a trans emoji in the comments so i know um and hope you have a nice day morning evening night wherever you are in the world and i shall see you very soon bye bye trans trans.